Okay, now we're going to introduce the concept of the basin of attraction. What a basin of attraction is, is it's the set of initial conditions that's bound for a particular equilibrium point. A really good way to illustrate the concept of a basin of attraction is to use the Ali model here. As you recall, the Ali model has three equilibrium points. On a graph of x versus the rate equation x prime, you can see that the um, function that defines the rate equation here intersects the x-axis one, two, three times. And so since those places are the places where x prime is equal to zero, that means there are three equilibrium points at zero, a, that's the threshold in which the Ali effect causes populations to decline instead of increase, and K, the carrying capacity. There's a um, quick look at the uh, equation. And over on this side, I've drawn a time series. Um, and recall that equilibrium points look like the x-intercepts on a graph of x versus x prime. But how that relates to the actual time series of the time dynamics of the functions x as a function of t, that um, concept of the x prime being zero is equivalent to equilibrium being a horizontal line in time. Because you can see that for each of these three values of x, the special values at zero, a, and k, we have this equilibrium type behavior. So if you start with a population of zero, you're going to be stuck with a population of zero for all time. Same thing if you start with a population where x equals a or where x equals k here, um, those equilibria are represented as horizontal lines in time. Okay, so now for basins of attraction, what I want to do is talk about initial conditions that are values that we start with for the model other than the equilibrium values. Like we were talking about before when we first introduced this graph, this graph kind of tells us that if we start anywhere else on the horizontal axis and any other state x, it kind of tells us which direction we're going to move. For example, if we start right here, if we start with an initial condition between a and k, the derivative x prime is positive there. So if we start on this initial condition here, we're going to move in the positive direction. We're going to increase in x and move to the right until we get stuck at the equilibrium point k. Okay? So just to illustrate how that concept relates to the time series graph, let's pretend that we started at this initial condition that I'll label x naught, and the x prime rate equation tells us to go to the right. First, we're going to go to the right by a large amount, and then a smaller amount, and a smaller amount, and as we approach the equilibrium point, our rate is slowing down, and so what that results on the time series is a, a solution that looks like x naught, and it's increasing, first at a fast amount, but then at a slower and a slower and slower amount, and so we're going to be increasing towards the carrying capacity, and then um, always tending towards it, but mathematically speaking, never exactly getting to the carrying capacity. Okay? That's why we talked about the carrying capacity being a stable equilibrium point, because if we start at some value that's close to but less than it, we're going to go towards it. And if we start at some value over here, which is greater than k, the rate equation tells us to decline and also go towards k, which would be like this. If I started at another condition over here, another x naught over here, see the rate equation is negative, and so it tells me I'm going to decrease, decrease, decrease until I get to the carrying capacity. What that looks like on the time series graph is, if I started at that initial condition there, I'm just going to decrease in kind of an exponential fashion and always, again, approach the equilibrium point. Okay? So when I say the basin of attraction is a set of initial conditions that are headed for a particular equilibrium, what I'm trying to do for the particular equilibrium, which is k, the carry capacity, is I would try to describe the set of all initial conditions that are going to be headed for sure to the carrying capacity. Can you see what kind of initial conditions, all in all, would eventually head for the carrying capacity? Yeah, it's all the initial conditions between A and K, and then all the initial conditions that are greater than K. So the basin of attraction for the carrying capacity K is all the initial conditions that are greater than A um, pretty much onward. 
those are all going to be headed for K. Okay, the thing that I was drawing on the horizontal axis here, I could actually draw as a vertical line here. You see, that's called the phase line. And sometimes it's nice to take the description that we did on the horizontal axis and kind of flip it so that it's vertical. That way when we line it up with a time series, we can see that these arrows we drew directly correspond to the behavior that we drew over here. Okay, so I'm going to kind of redraw the exact thing that I drew on this x-axis, but I'm going to draw it on this phase line, which, a which is a description of the one-dimensional state space x. It's just vertical because you can see on a time series that one-dimensional state space is on the vertical axis, right? So just like we were talking about before, if I started at an initial condition here, I'm going to head towards the carrying capacity. And if I start with an initial condition up here, I'm going to head down towards the carrying capacity. That's a stable, steady state at the carrying capacity. And who's going to end up in that stable, steady state? Pretty much everybody who starts above A, whether you're above or below K. As long as you're above the LE threshold A, you're going to go towards carrying capacity. And so that's why we define this whole area all initial conditions greater than A as the basin of attraction for the carrying capacity K. So I'm just going to erase these labels. I'll just replace them over here so you can see them. Those are the fixed points there. X equals K and X equals A and X equals zero down here, which represents extinction. Okay, so what I'm going to do there is discover that the basin of attraction for K for the carrying capacity K is all initial conditions that are greater than A. That's pretty much anything that I start with that's greater than A is going to head towards K. That's all it means. So now let's consider what the basin of attraction is for some of the other um, equilibrium points. Make sure that you understand it. Okay, let's go to zero, extinction. That's a pretty important um, equilibrium point when we're talking about population dynamics. So what kind of initial conditions are going to result in a population that ends up going towards zero? Again, this is a very helpful graph to look at because we can kind of talk about um, if we start over here, like maybe we're going to start with a little x naught that's um, less than a here. The rate equation here is negative if you start with an x naught that's less than a. You see, because f of x is dipped below the horizontal axis. And negative x prime means that I'm going to end up decreasing, decreasing, getting less and less, and headed towards zero. That same concept illustrated on the vertical phase line would be like me saying if I started at this x naught here, because the f of x is less than zero, I'm going to be decreasing, decreasing. And so, sure enough, I'm headed for extinction. And that same concept illustrated on the time series here would tell me that if I start with an initial condition that's greater than zero but less than A, I'm going to be decreasing, decreasing, and I'm headed towards extinction. Okay? So what's the basin of attraction for zero? How would you describe that? Like how I described the basin of attraction for K is all initial conditions X naught which are greater than A. I'm going to write the next one here, but I want you to try to write it down first. How are you going to describe that basin of attraction for, um, for the fixed point zero? The basin of attraction for K is X not greater than A. The basin of attraction for zero is all initial conditions less than A. That's right, because if we start anywhere inside this area, that same kind of thing is going to happen where the rate equation is going to tell me to decrease and then I'm going to be out of luck. And so that's x naught is less than a. Okay, um, now let's recall stability theory a little bit because stability theory has a lot to do with these things that we're calling basins of attraction. Do you remember which of these fixed points is called stable and which of the fixed points is described as unstable? Yeah. Right, when we look at the linear stability analysis, looking at the tangent line here, the value of df dx, it's negative right here, and so k is a stable fixed point. 
right? And likewise, the tangent line here for the extinction fixed point zero also has a negative slope. And so, just like the carrying capacity, zero is a stable fixed point. And then what about A, the at least threshold? If I look at the tangent line there, you see that tangent line is going to have a positive slope. And so linear stability theory would tell me that A, the fixed point in the middle, is an unstable fixed point. And sure enough, just like we learned, it's pretty much impossible to have two stable fixed points next to each other. It just wouldn't make sense. There has to be an unstable fixed point in between that kind of like defines the basins of attraction for the stable fixed point. So um, in one dimension, as we travel across the one dimensional state line X, we see a stable, then an unstable, then another stable fixed point. And we see these basins of attraction are nice defined intervals for each of the stable fixed points. But what's the basin of attraction for the unstable fixed point? You notice I saved that one for last. Remember, the basin of attraction is a set of initial conditions that's headed for that fixed point. And what do we know about unstable fixed points? Why are they called unstable? It's because if we start somewhere near them, initial conditions nearby to an unstable fixed point are going to go away from that fixed point. They are repelled by that fixed point instead of attracted to the fixed point, like the basins of attraction we were talking about. And so um, that leads us to conclude that Basins of attraction are for attracting fixed points. Basins of attraction are basically for stable fixed points only because stable fixed points are the ones where you have initial conditions heading for them. Unstable fixed points, I guess you could say they have a basin of attraction, but it's not going to be a nice interval like this. What is the initial condition? There's only one. Where if I start at it, I'm going to go to x equals a. What do I have to start at in order to stay at x equals a for all time? x equals a. That's the only initial condition that's going to lead me to actually stay on this line for all time. And so I wouldn't really call it a basin because it's not like, it's not a real interval like x greater than a or less x than a. It's just a dividing line. Unstable fixed points kind of just have that one single value for initial conditions that are headed towards them. Um, and so here, where x equals a, only, only x not equals a is headed for that fixed point x equals a. That's the only one. Um, when we talk about nodes, remember there's a third type of fixed point, um, kind of a special one that's called a node, where it's like stable from one side and unstable from the other side. Well, those would have a basin of attraction for their stable side, but they wouldn't have one for their unstable side. Um, and those don't, um, they've been described as mathematically pathological in the book, and so those don't really appear um, in actual real life too much. So we're kind of just going to focus on purely stable or purely unstable fixed points or equilibria. And like I was saying, basins of attraction, those are for stable equilibrium points only. Unstable equilibrium points do have technically a basin of attraction, but it's just one value instead of an interval of value.